Welcome! In this video I'm going to introduce you to geometry tools and we are going to actually build something with them. Something really simple is just to illustrate how they work and then later on I will show you how to build more complex stuff. But for now uh, I'm uh, using the content example project from Epic, you can get it from the Learn tab. And I really, really recommend this thing. It's really awesome. I would have built something uh, on my own to demonstrate this, but this thing here really works. So uh, if you want to find the map that I'm using, type uh, geometry editing, and here's the map. I won't reopen it. And there are also bookmarks to go around the map if I press one, two, three. So here's... The one here. So this illustrates how additive and subtractive brush works. So if I move this down, I, by the way, I'm not using the snap. We should you you should be using at least on ten or five or above that one might get you in trouble. So if we move here, as you can see, this gets subtracted, but that is something that I want to demonstrate on my own. So. I'm going to just grab the material from this one. So if I click the surface that I want materi material from that surface and I click this magnifier glass, uh, as you can see where it is, it's an example content, BSP materials. And uh, we have a few materials here that are used in this level. And you can open those materials, see how they're built, but I'm going to move uh, away a bit. If I bring, so if I go into modes panel and bring a box here, um, I really recommend snapping to 50 or 100 when you're doing this. So it's kind of better that way and get more precise snapping. And if you end up accidentally not snapping to the grid, uh, this turned off, go to transform, I'll snap a line and then um, this one, uh, snap origin to the grid. Or you can snap it also to a floor with uh, this thing. And uh, these shortcuts are really common, so try to remember them. Control and end and end to snap to the floor. So to origin, snap origin to the grid, control end to snap to the floor, use end. And also remember that where they are. So if you forget the shortcut, you can always find it. I will try to always show you where the option is so you don't have to remember the shortcut right away. And uh, yeah, snap it. And if you want to apply the material, um, you select the surface that you want to apply the material. I'm just left clicking on it. And you drag either to the surface or here. So you can drag here or you can click this and drag. If you want to apply... Um, the material to the whole thing, uh, you press Shift and B and that selects the whole thing. And then you can see we have two materials and if I drag this one, it's it has materials on everything. <clears throat> and my engine keeps glitching a bit. I know, don't know what that is about. I think I updated the graphics driver recently. Maybe that's it on, or maybe it's because I'm recording, but it's not a big deal, I think. Either way, um, you can select all the surfaces again through this and uh, select, select, um, so select all, uh, select all surfaces. Here it is, Shift and B. So it's usually on a right click menu. If you're not sure about something, how I did it, try to find it here. Uh, but I will try to tell you where it is and what is the shortcut. If I forget, uh, ask in the comments. So. We are on the same page here, and um, so we brought this brush in. One thing that you can do with the brush, you can hold Alt and uh, copy it, that you can do with anything, you can do that with the light if you want. I won't do it, but you can do it with the light with painting. That's really, makes it really easy to edit stuff, so you can add one, modify it, then uh, just copy it and keep modifying it a bit if you, ha if you need to. And let's add a different brush. So this time I will select this subtractive material and I will also put my brush into a subtractive mode. And when I drag it in, okay, it's snapping here. Let's snap it to a floor. So if I drag it alongside the floor, it's going to snap to the floor. 
and maybe wanna get half of this thing. Okay, and I start to snap to the to this brush here, but if I drag it here and let it go before that happens, well, I failed. I wanted to get this part. I could I I, I said half, so like this maybe this quarter of the brush, but either way. We can also get uh, what they get here, so is that, these brushes are actually smaller than this. Uh, that one is one meter tall, so if we wanted to make it like that one there, we could uh, reduce the size. So as you can see, um, I had the material that's applied to the subtractive brush, where, where you subtract, that is where it's going to be applied. One thing that's going to really annoy you when you start using this, if I click off this, how do I select that brush? If I click on this one, no. But the way to select it is to actually click on uh, the surface that is being carved out, so that is being subtracted. You can also go into a wireframe and see it that way. Um, you can also try this maybe, show collisions. And then you can see it, uh, kind of not the way to do it, but you can do it that way. I don't know if there's any other option to make it show. Okay, so let's try to recreate this thing here. So I will actually go and uh, delete this one. You can see that one is smaller, so let's make this thing smaller. You have to select the whole brush, you can do that by Control shift and then clicking the surface again. So that toggles between selecting the whole thing and Also the other way to do it is to actually click on the edge so not to select the surface but the brush and uh, That one looks like it's one meter and our uh, Brush here is uh, two meters. So let's reduce um, XYZ to be a one meter so 100 then a hundred, then a hundred. Okay, that looks like it's like that there. And uh, I will duplicate this. And it's being subtracted from here, right? So we can change the mode. So before we drag in the brush and select it subtractive, but we don't have to work that way. We can always have it on other than change our minds later on. And click on subtractive, yeah. But we also want to add uh, this material when we subtract. So I'm click, the, click this surface and then I will press shift B to select all surfaces and drag this. So this is subtractive. But now what, what will happen if I decide to duplicate this to have it like that? So if I drag this and yeah, I'm kind of overriding. You can see it's not doing what we wanted it to do. I will also select this to... Uh, uh, by the way, if you want to select two brushes, you do not shift click but control click to select both of them. So, this kind of isn't working as we wanted it to work, is it? So, actually this brush is should be here, right? Kind of if you look at that thing, yeah. So, why isn't this working? Well, that's the order. So, uh, this thing, we started with this, we changed this brush into subtractive, but then after this, after this brush, this one came. So, this one is the higher in the order of uh, when they was they were created so you have to actually change the order so you go i i control shift click this surface here to um, select uh, the whole brush and if i click the order and say uh, to last as you can see it's subtracting this whole thing but it kind of didn't apply the material to the whole thing, so I'm going to press Shift-B and then drag it here. And we made this thing the same. So the other way to do it would actually be, let's try it this way. My engine keeps like... It, it does some weird thing when... Uh, I, I will have to sort that out, but 
it kind of freezes a bit. Okay, so if I drag this brush and make one more, and then make my subtractive brush, so this is going to be a subtractive brush, and uh, let's let's add the material right away. So I'm going to press Shift B, add the material, and then I'm going to change it. Uh, let's select it uh, a different way. So I will click on the edge to select it. Change the order to, actually you don't have to change the order, just change the subtractive and bam. So if you want to carve out from uh, multiple surfaces, uh, the carve brush should be in uh, the order of the last. So the, uh, the, the one that either created less or last or you have to mess around with uh, the order. But that's the way to do the order and the other stuff. So, um, this uh, represents the order. We just did that. So, that is kind of why that didn't work. But I explained that. Uh, the solidity um, thing, it's uh, here. You can change it to semi-solid or not solid. To be honest, I never use this. But if you need it for some reason, this is for transparent materials mostly. You can have non-solid object, uh, so it won't have collision, uh, no interaction with solids. So it won't interact with uh, solid uh, geometry brushes. Semi-solid uh, will have co collision, but no interaction with solids. And this is uh, a regular solid with just transparent materials. So as you can see, it's carving out the surface. It's actually not carving out the surface. I'm not sure if it's... Let's click it. Uh, no, it's an additive mod, but uh, since it's transparent, we're, we're seeing through that brush, basically. Yes. It kind of looks like it's carving it, but it's making a mess, to be honest. You definitely don't want that uh, that to happen. So if you want uh, some brush to go inside a different brush, uh, but not carve it, with uh, transparent material, then you should use uh, one of these other modes, non-solid or semi-solid mode. And uh, this thing here, um, this is surface alignment. This is something that um, I think I will go over when we start making something more interesting, but let me give you a quick example. So let's drag one more brush here. Okay, so if I select this here, uh, I can go and rotate it. If I click on rotate, I can uh, also pan it. So move it up and down. I can flip UVs. Uh, flipping UVs will um, basically mirror it along well, we are in 3D space, but along if you're if you're working uh, looking at it from uh, orthographic view, kind of straight on on the surface, on X and uh, Y axis, so you can see we are flipping it. Also, we can scale it. We can uh, usually you should lock it so scale it uniformly, and apply. You can see we have it more or less make it bigger or smaller. We can also mess around with light map resolution. That is something that I'm going to leave for later on. So that is what is being uh, explained here. This is default. This is scale and pan, rotate and flip. So uh, we go over that. And uh, this is uh, uh, edit geometry. Um, you get to that. Well, let's drag in a new brush. So we'll make something that looks like that. You get into edit mode by pressing Shift F5 or just clicking on this. And in this mode, you can uh, select uh, vertices like in uh, 3D modeling software. If I press Control and uh, click on this too, I can uh, pull it up. And bam, that looks awesome, doesn't it? And uh, they actually built this small house as an example. We're going to build maybe something more complex in the next video, but here it is how it works. This is a subtractive brush. If I pull it, we lose a door. Uh, here, this is an additive, but this one is subtractive to make that window and so on. 
So definitely give uh, this a go. Uh, get content examples and uh, play around. And make sure you understand the, the basics. So I, 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 I would say these are the basics. There are way more advanced stuff that you can do with uh, um, geometry brushes. Like uh, you can, um, there are more, more modes you can, um, if you go here, you can extrude, you can uh, do cuts, you can uh, draw the brushes. Um, and yeah, you can do some weird stuff with them. But generally uh, speaking, you can build the whole level with almost nothing but just the box in additive mode. And there are some caveats that you have to know um, that we are going to look at uh, in the next video. But these are the basics. Make sure you understand them, then move on to the next video. So guys, I hope that uh, this video was helpful. If it did, make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next one.